brilliant. Uh, the reason is because we've just gone into load shedding in South Africa. And my colleague, um, soon to be Dr. Zadwa Treasure Jlamini, is in Iswatini, previously called Swaziland. And she hasn't had power for all of today. So she's joining us, but she's obviously uh, tapping into another source. So um, that's the reason why we are sitting in the dark and still able to present. So um, this particular study is comes comes from is, is actually Zodwa's PhD study. And so I'm assisting her here as a supervisor or rather ex-supervisor to do the presentation given um, these particular circumstances that we find ourselves in. Um, so as you can tell, what we wanted to understand here is whether there was authentic assessment in entrepreneurship education. And that's that's the paper particularly that we're going to be discussing today. Uh, the, the PhD study itself zoned into textbooks and in particular business studies textbooks in three countries in Swaziland, which is the yellow there, in Lesotho, the yellow here, and in Botswana. That's just your map in case you weren't, uh, you're finding it difficult to navigate in your mind. So Iswatini, previously called Swaziland, Lesotho and Botswana were colonized by the British Empire. And here I'm going to reference Dr. Chilone Songa and where I, Unfortunately, I don't agree with her that we need to keep politics uh, separate to everything because politics determines education as it very well did during apartheid in South Africa. Your That's access good. to quality mm -hmm. education. So both, three, uh, both of these, all these countries achieved independence in the 1960s. And what we know is that during this time, colonial education prepared colonized nations to hold the lowest ranks in society. Um, and of course, to support imperialist efforts to exploit their own nations. And given this, rote learning then was a method of, became part and parcel of instruction, teaching and learning. What it did was encourage memory retention and mental programming amongst local children. Both Iswatini and Lesotho committed their education to overcoming poverty and growing the economy by introducing this new school subject, business studies. The idea and the aim in doing this was to combat unemployment and produce learners that will be job makers rather than job seekers. We know the value of education in terms of the right to education being a human right and being this crucial power weapon to combat poverty. In developing nations such as the ones I've just spoken about, access to quality education can enhance a citizen's economic performance. And it will equip all learners with the skills to be economically productive, create sustainable livelihoods, and improve human well-being. With textbooks being the instructional technology, we know that they have been used and can be used to achieve national prerogatives, such as poverty alleviation. And of course, a well-written textbook with good assessments will encourage learners to think critically, something which we didn't see during uh, before uh, independence and also help them to solve problems. The World Bank has already found that indeed there is this critical connection between educational success and the quality of textbooks that we have out there. And good quality textbooks and good assessments in textbooks are underpinned by authenticity. And authenticity is the highlight obviously of this paper. Relating class loop learning to learners real life needs physical and social environments. In terms of the theoretical, the theoretical strands, business studies as subject is now offered in Iswatini and Lesotho schools from junior level to senior level. It teaches learners about the skills needed by entrepreneurs to run their businesses successfully. Both these countries align on a macro scale with developing and promoting a neoliberal society. And of course, both of these countries aim to prepare the individual for employment in a capitalist market. Most citizens in both countries do start businesses for the sole reason of survival, given the extent of poverty in both these countries. Of course, majority of entrepreneurs may not have the relevant knowledge and skills to start and operate their businesses, which is why this particular subject is so critical. And as a result, 
they will experience business failures as we've been saying. In terms of some statistics for both these countries, I've presented it there to you in terms of the Iswati Development Finance Corporation, where 80% of medium and small enterprises fail within five years. In Lesotho, the statistics published in 2021 show that 50% fail within five years. Assessment in education is thus an integral role in identifying the level of effectiveness of teaching and learning. And it also indicates where the educational objectives will be achieved. Most importantly, authentic assessment can serve as this powerful tool for assessing learners in terms of their 21st century skills as well. Apart from the fact that it provides learners with opportunities to practice the real life activities. In the context of global education reforms, we know that authentic tasks allow for high order thinking, critical skills and problem solving. So this paper then, as I've already explained, drew from the tasks that were embedded in three textbooks, but we only discussed two in this paper. The focus was on problem solving and critical think, uh, thinking skills in terms of preparing learners to be future entrepreneurs. The authors, that's myself and Sodwa, argue here that business studies as a subject should be for business, that is, to prepare learners to be entrepreneurs. And it should not only be about business, meaning that it should not only be about providing knowledge and understanding of the economic, financial, and marketing aspects. What it must do is prepare learners to be these job makers. In other words, entrepreneurs. Two minute warning, two minute warning. Thank you. An analytical framework was developed by Zodwa, uh, which was the multidimensional framework, and she analyzed the assessment tasks. This framework then was adapted from Bloom's and also the South African Umalusi framework on assessment. Um, the study was qualitative. Uh, it was actually mixed method, but leaned more towards qualitative. We looked at those two specific sections of entrepreneurship and business ownership. And of course, we looked at the junior level uh, in, both, in both countries. The findings was that majority of the tasks were on business ownership. So in other words, entrepreneurship um, had fewer tasks. And automatically, what this means is that there's a focus more on business ownership than entrepreneurship. And what it may also signal is that entrepreneurship is not as significant as business ownership. Uh, there's also this dominance of very short answer quest tasks in the textbooks. And these tasks were um, not tasks that speak to high order thinking skills, but rather the opposite. And, and that was highly problematic for us. And I've just given you some statistics around this in terms of essay tasks, etc. So what eventually came out of the study was that textbooks were not really focusing on empowering learners with entrepreneurial skills. The short answer tasks does not just uh, develop their high order thinking skills. Um, and I've given you some examples there as well. Um, learners had to do mere recall. Um, they had to just sift out from the textbook and reproduce. And I've given you more examples here, Zodwa so and I, of how um, answers should be just retrieved directly from textbook content. Um, there were some that allowed for application, for example, analysis and evaluation skills. And I've given you the essay there about the Minister of Trade and Industry and, uh, and the question on how would you sustain a small and medium enterprise in the country. And, and that's a case study, which is an authentic task, which requires learners to use logical thinking and infer. So... Unfortunately, what we found just from these two sections in the textbooks were that they seem to be following the same colonial education format, where learners were taught using a rote learning kind of approach, very little thinking, uh, critical thinking and problem solving skills. And of course, we really worried that this has a dire implications for the quality of education in these countries, particularly given goal four of the SDGs on quality education. Um, of course, these are only two um, sections in the textbook and 
greater uh, interrogation of the textbook is required. And lastly, we reiterate that business studies should be for business um, rather than only being about business. And I'd like to then stop because I think I've already spoken to this dissonance between government's objectives of including the topics and what was really happening and unfolding in the textbooks. Thank you very much. Thank you.